The other thing worth mentioning about EDIUS 8 is that there are two versions. Now, we've had two versions of EDIUS for quite some time. In fact, we've had three versions. We've had EDIUS Neo, we've had EDIUS Pro, and EDIUS Elite. EDIUS Neo has always been a cut down, quite cheap version, and that has now finished. That's no longer available. So we've only got two versions now, EDIUS Pro and EDIUS Workgroup. The features are very similar between the two. EDIUS Workgroup has got some specific things that you'll want if you're doing broadcast editing or maybe if you're talking to other editing programs. And I'm just going to outline some of them here. EDIUS Pro is probably the closest that you had to the Pro version of EDIUS 7, although there are a couple of differences there. There's a couple of things that have been taken out and put into the Workgroup version that used to be in EDIUS Pro 7. So, for example, there's no loudness meter and there's no audio monitoring options inside of EDIUS Pro 8, which used to be in EDIUS Pro 7. Apart from that, it's fairly similar. The other major thing that has been taken out of the Pro version is it won't export MXF files. EDIUS Pro will still make lots of different types of files, so things like XD CAM files, DVC Pro files, ABC Intra files. It's just this list of MXF files that was in EDIUS Pro 7, it won't make anymore. So it's only generic MXF files it doesn't make, it makes all sorts of other broadcast type formats. You can buy that as an option for EDIUS Pro, or that's something which is kept for the workgroup version. On the format support, basically they support pretty much the same range of footage. But the big thing that the workgroup version does is it supports Avid DNX HD footage. Now we are talking here about Avid DNX HD, which is in an MXF wrapper. If it's QuickTime format files, which are the kind of files that you're likely to film in if you're using some Blackmagic hard drive recorders and Atmos recorders, QuickTime DNX HD is supported in the Pro version because you just need the QuickTime codec to do that. But DNX HD in an MXF file, which is the kind of stuff that you'll be creating and capturing if you're actually editing with Avid, is not supported unless you buy the workgroup version. It wasn't supported in EDIUS Pro 7, it's not supported in EDIUS Pro 8, but it is in the workgroup version. The upshot of that is if I am using Avid, and for example, let's go to the browser and point it to my Avid Media Folders directory, and you can see, oh, I can see the clips which are actually in the Avid Media Folder. This was an option that you could buy for EDIUS Pro 7. It's still an option that you can buy for EDIUS Pro 8, and it's built into workgroup. The biggest practical upshot of this is that if you are collaborating with somebody that's actually working in Avid, it makes it a lot easier to get clips between the two programs. So you can make the kind of files that an Avid editor can use, you can just export an AAF, they can open it up, and then it'll link straight away to those files with a minimum amount of faffing. He can then send you stuff out of his Avid and you can read it, so it's really good if you're collaborating with Avid people. Not so useful for people who aren't collaborating with Avid people because you wouldn't use that kind of format otherwise. So that's why it's in the workgroup version, not in the pro version. If you just have EDIUS 8 Pro, you can actually buy the Avid MXF option and it also gives you back all the generic MXF options. With EDIUS 7, you had the option to buy a pro Dolby exporter. This would let you make Dolby surround sound with a pro plugin as opposed to the standard plugin which came with EDIUS 7. It was always an option. It never actually came with EDIUS 7 Pro. It used to come with the EDIUS Elite. Well, in EDIUS 8, you can't buy it as an option for Pro. You can only buy it as an option for the workgroup version. So it doesn't come with either of them. It's only an option for the workgroup version. It's an option that's going to cost you a couple of hundred quid. It's still there, but it's only an option if you get the workgroup version. On the capture side, probably the biggest thing is that the workgroup version will let you actually edit footage that's being captured, whereas the Pro version doesn't. Again, it doesn't affect an awful lot of people, but if you're in a fast turnaround environment and you're actually capturing footage into EDIUS, you can actually edit it whilst it's capturing if you've got the workgroup version and not with the Pro version. With the workgroup version, you can actually set it to upload to an FTP site, which you don't with the Pro version. Again, sort of thing that a lot of people won't use. It's the sort of thing you use if you're using a Grass Valley Stratus or some great big network system. You get the file to upload at the end of it somewhere else. The Pro version is optimized for a single processor. The workgroup version is optimized for dual processors. Now, a single processor with multiple cores, which is you know, what the average person buys, a regular Haswell system or a 2011 pin system, might have eight cores, which 
with hyperthreading is seen as 16 cores, the Pro version will handle that quite happily. It's when you go to a Xeon system, you'll be better off getting the workgroup version because the workgroup version will handle two physical processors better than the Pro version. The other big things about the workgroup version is that it interacts nicely with Grass Valley's Stratus network editing system. The other features which are missing from the Pro version, they've taken the loudness meter and they've put that only into the workgroup version. Again, it's not something that most people will actually need, but the loudness meter will actually go through a timeline for you and analyze it and tell you where the sound doesn't meet certain particular standards, which if you're sending a piece of footage off for broadcast, you have to make sure it comes within these particular standards. Now, the loudness meter doesn't fix anything. It just tells you where it's wrong, and then you have to go and fix it. It's only something you need if you're going to send clips off to broadcast. So they've put it in the workgroup version, not in the pro version. One of the features they've said should be coming in the life of EDIUS 8 is a loudness meter with automatic correction. The current one just analyzes it and tells you where it's wrong and you fix it. They're going to bring out one which actually analyzes it and fixes it at the same time, which will be really, really useful. Now, I don't know when that's coming out. It's just on the list of things going to be coming out in future versions of EDIUS 8, but it'll only be in the workgroup version. Another thing, imagine you've got a clip and you've got eight channels on it, or six channels if it's surround sound. Now with EDIUS 7 and 6 and 5, basically if you had stereo speakers on your system and you're feeding it with eight channel file, it would only play the first two. In the later versions of EDIUS 7, they added in the ability to set up specific routing. So you could come into the mixer here and you could say, yeah, down mix it to mono or down mix it to stereo or set your own up which meant that if you had a multi-channel audio file, you could actually monitor it nicely on a pair of stereo speakers. Now, for most people, again, this isn't an issue because they'll just probably be using stereo clips. And it wasn't even something that was in EDIUS 7 till about 7.4. So it's been like that for ages in EDIUS. What they've decided to do is they're going to put that audio monitoring function into the workgroup version and not the pro version. So that basically means that if you're using the Pro version, it'll be like EDIUS 6, 6.5 and the earlier versions of EDIUS 7. If you get the workgroup version, you get the extra fancy stuff to do with being able to tell it how you monitor your audio. There's a couple of other small features. There's things like pre-roll editing. Now, it's probably something you've never actually fiddled with. If I go to the player here, I've added in a couple of buttons which aren't normally on the display. What these let you do is they let you take a clip in the player like this and then kind of see what it would be like if you put it on the timeline without you actually putting it on the timeline. It was put in there specifically at the request of a couple of broadcasters. I don't think that if you're using the pro version, many people will miss them. But there's something that's in the workgroup version and not in the pro version. To give you an example of how it works, I'm just going to pop this into a dual mode so you can see both screens and I've got to go into overwrite mode because it doesn't work in insert mode and then what you do is you mark an in and out point on your clip you stick your cursor somewhere on the timeline and then you press one of these two buttons to see what it would look like with that clip put in there so I'm going to click on the preview button gives a quick run up and then there we are that's what it would look like if the Eiffel Tower was stuck in that clip and that's it. Using the preview button, it previews it, but doesn't put the clip in there. Using the record button, it shows you what the edit would look like. And then puts the new clip in place. So that's the only difference between the two. One previews it, one previews it, and then puts it in place. I think a lot of people didn't even know they were in EDIUS. Obviously, it's mentioned in our tutorial, but I don't know how many people use them. Well, they're not in the Pro version. That's only in the Workgroup version. Probably the biggest thing that will make a difference between Pro and Workgroup for many people is the activation side of it. EDIUS is not doing subscription. You pay for it once, and then you've got the use of it forever. When EDIUS 9 comes out, you decide whether you want to pay more or whether you just carry on using the one that you've got. Unlike Adobe, where you have to pay for it monthly, and if you stop paying, it stops working. So they're definitely not doing subscription. It has put some people off using the Adobe software. They're not doing it with EDIUS. The software has to be activated via the internet. Yeah, you can either do that online or offline. But what they're also doing is that with the Pro version, they're saying that you actually have to connect to the internet roughly once a month just to verify the license. That does mean that your machine will have to go onto the internet once a month. 
a lot of people use their machines on the internet anyway, so it's not much of a problem. There are some people who aren't allowed to put their machines on the internet. We've dealt with security companies, uh, defense establishments, places like that, who cannot put their computers on the internet at all. They won't be able to use EDIUS Pro because the machine has to go on the internet. For those people, they'll have to buy EDIUS Workgroup. The Workgroup one doesn't require that you go on the internet. It's only the Pro one that requires that you go on the internet. Now, I think for a lot of people this won't be an issue because their machines will be on the internet anyway. They won't really care. But if you don't like putting your machine on the internet, then you're going to have to get the Workgroup version. And this is a slight change from how EDIUS 7 used to work, which you could quite cheerfully never put on the internet. You could activate it and never bother to put it on the internet. 